Hey everyone, I'm Michael Majors. And I'm Ross Merriam. And you're watching the Versus Series on StarCityGames.com. Hello and welcome to another Versus video here on StarCityGames.com. If you checked out the deck tech, which if you haven't already, you should with uh, Michael Majors and myself here, you will know that Michael is playing a sweet brew, as he is prone to do, the mono-red Thopter Eldrazi deck. And I, on the other hand, am playing a less-than-sweet brew. And by <laughs> less-than-sweet, I mean it's already been unveiled. Uh, it was the green-white hardened scales deck that did very well last weekend at Grand Prix Houston, putting two players in the top eight. Uh, I played it myself that weekend and went 11-4 and four to a reasonable finish. Uh, missed cash and tiebreakers, tilt. But Jeez. the the deck was uh, fairly impressive, actually. Uh, Nissa Voice of Zendikar is the new addition to the deck that really makes it because it's a card that can really take advantage of all the counter synergies in the deck without you having hardened scales in play. But if you do have hardened scales in play, it's utterly bonkers. It's it's weird that we call Nissa a new card. It's kind of just like finally getting the recognition it deserves. Yeah, Nissa is just a very powerful card, and and we're finally starting to see. Uh, people incorporated into decks we've seen it in the sideboard of a Tarka red and yep. then that deck sort of morph into a different kind of deck where that just plays nissa in the main and p and kira and get a little bit bigger uh, and now the hardened skills deck really does take advantage of it very well um astute viewers of our versus video series <laughs> may remember me playing a hardened skills deck with nissa at a versus video during the spoiler season for oath of the gate watch that video did not go particularly well I believe you 4 one to me with Just Guy Black. And with a Crush of Tentacles. <laughs> with a Crush of Tentacles, yeah. yes. And I was uh, unimpressed with the deck enough to shelve it after that because I am apparently really stupid. Well, what do you think's changed then? There there have been some, some subtle changes between the deck as it's configured now and back then. Yes, the two changes that have been made from that list to this that I think are very important is the addition of Endless One over a Den Protector. Den Protector, I just don't think is in a good spot in Standard right now. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult to sort of get value out of it. It's just really expensive. When you, and when you play this a morph on turn three, you're going to fall pretty far behind because the 2-2 body just doesn't do enough. Or just immediately dies to, like, Fire Impulse or something. Yeah, that's the, the other. And that's a horrible trade for you to make, too. So Den Protector is not particularly good, and Endless One is just great in the deck because Nissa what skews the deck towards a more aggressive direction. You want to get on board as much as possible before playing Nissa to take the most possible advantage out of its minus two ability. And Endless One can be played for one, and with Hardened Scales, it's a two-two. It can be just curve Hardened Scales into Endless One and have a Watch Wolf on turn two, and then you, maybe you do something else on turn three, and then Nissa on four. It can also just be a zero mana spell if you want to pump up Mana Gorge or Hydras really quickly. Sure. And between it and Hangerback Walker, you can s sort of combo kill them with a Mana Gorge or Hydra uh, more easily than you might think. So Endless One gives the uh, just fits the deck a little bit better because it's trying to be really low to the ground. And fitting it just that part of the curve is really nice while also being very good if you draw it late. So basically what you're saying is that this Hardened Scales, got deck, excuse me, Hardened Scales deck got better as soon as you start adding Moral Drawsy to it. Yeah, basically. Okay. That's the, I mean, that's what every deck needs. It's a recurring theme. Yeah, we added Eldrazi to this deck. We, yep. got we got Eldrazi in every deck. They've literally taken over everything. At this point, you just have to sort of welcome them with open arms. Yeah, even the voice of Zendikar is just bringing on the Endless Ones into her crew. Yep. I, for one, welcome our new Eldrazi overlords. <laughs> but that's... I mean, it's just true. Uh, you can't <laughs> fight it anymore. They, you just have to accept it. Yep. Eldrazi are great. Just start playing them. They're all great. Literally all of them. Can we, what, what are the, can we play like the seven mana Birthing Hulk? Is that an Eldrazi? That card's probably great too. Has regeneration. That's a pretty yeah. powerful keyword. Yeah. It's the same casting house as World Breaker. It's probably just as good. They're both Eldrazi. <laughs> so we added Eldrazi to the deck. That made it great. I think the other thing that was really important was cutting the Blue Splash that was frequently played for Stubborn Denial and Disdainful Stroke mostly. And while Stubborn Denial functioned really nicely when you built this really big creature, maybe a Hydra or an Avatar, and you were able to get, counter their removal spell and essentially end the game, the strain on the mana base is really significant because the way the deck is configured now with Nyssa, there are very few white cards, at least in the main deck. There's only Dramokis Command and Absent Falconer, so it's virtually a mono green deck, and that means having Prairie Stream in your deck is really subpar. Also, Flooded Strand isn't great. Like there, there is... Flooded Strand and Basic Planes are the two worst lands in the deck. Mm -hmm. And there's only three Flooded Strands, there's only one Planes. Some lists uh, change it a little bit to try to accommodate more sideboard cards. But the, uh, 
you really just don't want to draw that many white sources in a given game. One is fine. Sometimes you need two. Uh, and any more than that is just horrible. And basic planes are really bad because you have avatars and a bunch of other green cards. It's pretty often that you want to play a green spell, maybe a servant or a hardened scales, followed by an avatar on turn three. And so having three green mana in plays actually comes up a decent amount. It probably came up more for me in Houston than needing two white mana. It's also just like a more cohesive go white aggro deck, not a like. Mana Gorger Hydra is extremely powerful, and when it runs away with the game, that's great. But the deck's not like a protect the queen deck, which is like what Stubborn Denial encourages. It's yeah, it's really just trying to like vomit its hand on the table and kill your opponent. Exactly. You 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 some of your creatures get pretty big. Like the of the three or four creatures you have in play, the third one is medium sized usually, and the fourth mm -hmm. one is gigantic. Right. But you're not winning solely in the back of that fourth creature. You're winning because of the collection of them that you you've produced. So you really don't need that and it just sort of messes with the deck's mana too much and slows it down uh makes your draws awkward yeah every time i had the basic planes in my opening hand i was sad <laughs> I, I and you you even rare you just rarely fetch it too you just go forest forest canopy vista that's your ideal so ha having more basic planes in your deck is something to be avoided and that is again I'll, I'll, we talked about this during the the deck deck for the red deck it's just a little tweak to the deck that adds a little percentages here and there and and that's all you really need this, this standard format does not have a lot of runaway decks that are winning 60% of their matches that often. Every deck is really close in power level. Anything can win on a given weekend. And so the edges that you're looking for to make your deck go from like pretty good to great are actually really small edges. And that's why the format's awesome. Yep. All so right. let's, let's get play some it. of this awesome format. And our awesome format for going first. Which I win every time. Yep. I have a, I have a full house. Oh, I was like, man, I have a straight. That's pretty good, but yeah. Who wins every time now? You stole my magic dice. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going to need all the dice. <laughs> yes, yes, you are going to need a lot of dice. This is how much <laughs> dice we're going to need. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> okay, we are here for game one, and my hand looks pretty good. I am going to play this on turn one, which is always great, and then this on turn two, which is a nice follow-up, and then... We draw a land. We have a great one, two, three curve. Keep. Yep, I got a nice little curve of things. Some man acceleration. A big thing. Let's keep. Forest hardened scales. Wow. So lucky. Your turn. Bam. Perfect. That actually was perfect. 19. 19. I'm going to get a basic forest. Ooh, maybe it's this one. Ah. It is. <laughs> Play a Hangerback Walker that will come in with two counters. Two counters. I'll shuffle my deck still. Okay. <laughs> Play Battlefield Forge, Heatron Crawler, your turn. Hmm. That is interesting. So. Draw. Ooh. So, I was tempted to cast this this turn to slow down Michael as much as possible, but because we drew another copy of this card, we can double spell next turn if we just play this here, which is a pretty natural progression of our hand, so I guess I'll just start out by attacking for two. No blocks. 18. And then I'm going to crack another Windswept Teeth and go to 18. I'm going to get a Canopy Vista, play a Nissa, and make a Plant Token. Okay. You can go. Uh, so two real options here. We can play this, or we can use our mana better and play, or potentially play both of these. And this line also allows us to do this next turn. So I think I want to just go ahead and play a Hedron Crawler and pass the turn. Hmm. This makes me wary of Spatial Contortion. Why ever would you say that? I'm also wary of Chandra next turn. Chandra's not great for you given that you have two Heat and Crawlers, though. Okay, we're. Chandra don't care. I'm drawing a few too many of these, but it's okay. So. Five cards in hand. What happens if you try to spatial contortion me? Not much. I 
feel like if you had Thought Not Seer, oh, Thought Not Seer, or Pia and Kira Nilar, you would have cast it last turn. Unless you really want a Chandra next turn. So, perhaps you have Reality Smasher. Okay, I'm gonna start by cracking this strand. Seventeen. Out of Seventeen. I'm gonna get another Canopy Vista. Because Planes is bad. Do that. Just kind of sitting here and waiting for Ross to. We don't, I don't really know what our line is going to be. It could be a million different things with Nissa Hangerback and Hardened and Skills in play. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm really stopping anything. Uh, anything important from happening by using one of these. So I think all I want to do is plus my Nissa and pass the turn. Okay. Um, so this isn't really doing anything right now. Ross could be sitting on something like a Tremoka's Command. Whatever do you mean? Uh, I didn't cast any spells, so I have nothing. Not <laughs> could, could just be a collected company. <laughs> so we're going to play this Team of the Spirit Dragon, and now that we drew this, we actually have quite a few different options. Um, I kind of generally like playing this, having this available, and then next turn we can have with this, we can do all three of these things, theoretically. Um, I don't think playing this this turn really accomplishes that much. Uh, this is tough. Certainly the presence of Jamoka's Command is potentially problematic. Also don't just want to like sit here and let Ross assemble a gigantic hangerback walker and then eventually crack it open somehow and then negative Nyssa, because then we're just going to probably just die. So that is something we have to consider as well. Um, if we do this, and Ross does have Jamroka's Command, that's really, really bad for us. Um, so I think this is probably the safest play for this turn. So I'm going to play a Vile Aggregate. And I'll leave up Tomb. And I'll pass the turn. Okay, I will level hanger back on Anset. Yep. I will counter fight vile aggregate. Let's see. So if we do this spatial contortion, I'm gonna have six thopters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so we could do this, trade, and then take 18 damage next turn, so that's probably not the best thing. <laughs> so I guess this is going to happen. So this goes up to six. Go to my turn. Sure. Draw. So once Hangerback is a 6-6, six, six, it is essentially dominates anything Majors is going to do. So I think I can start attacking with it. Attack for six. No box, 12. And I am interested in just continuing to plus Nissa, and eventually it will ultimate and do crazy things. I'll play Forest and pass. All right, I'll activate two minute turn, go to 14. Yep. All right. Um. Okay, we're going to play a Reality Smasher and attack Eornissa. Okay, 
I will counter on... Oh, no. That was not part of the plan. Uh, so I could counter on a plant, because the Hangerback Walker is plenty large enough, but that might not be... So if I counter a plant and then fight here, and Michael has spatial contortion... Um, yeah, he can't really contortion the Hangerback, because the Smasher will still die, and then my Hangerback will also die. Um... So I don't think there's really any reason to make the Hangerback Walker that much bigger. Uh, eventually, he's going to have to spatial contortion one of these plants anyway. So I will counter on a... There's no pump spell you can have. Yeah, contortion's the only instance. So I'll counter on a plant and Hangerback Fight Smasher. Discard this Winsor Peace. Yep, that happens. Good. Now it's possible I could just minus two Nissa. So if I do that, then you block here and take eight, brings you to six. And then if you played a Shan, Chandra wouldn't do anything because my hanger back would always live. I guess you could land Chandra. Um, but if you minus to kill any plants, your Hedron Crawlers would die. So if that might just be the safest and fastest way to win this game. As if you had like Pia and Kieran, that could get awkward. And I could just draw a bunch of cards, leave Hangerback Walker back for a potential um, Reality Smasher. If you have... Pia and Kieran in a land, you could immediately sack something to bring the Nissa to five, but that's not gonna I'll just plus the next turn or minus the next turn and I have an extra plant to do it with. So I'm just gonna plus okay. lay this land and actually pass the turn. Alright, I think we need to use our mana now, so I'm gonna go ahead and spatial contortion and yeah. plant token. Whenever your opponent uses removal spells on plant tokens. <laughs> You're happy. Yeah, I, I think I'm inclined to agree with that it's one statement. Of the, one of the joys of playing with Nyssa is watching your opponent do that. Um, okay, that's not actually the worst draw since it can keep Nyssa off ultimate next turn. Uh, just while this is a much more efficient play, I don't think it's actually really getting us anywhere, unfortunately. So I think we're just going to kind of make Ross have to decide whether he wants to use his Nissa next turn to minus, or just keep plussing, and keep his Hangerback Walker in a defensive stance, so we're going to play Thopter Engineer, trigger that, uh, play this Tomb of the Spirit Dragon, I'll attack Nissa for one. Uh, when I did not take into account, yeah. I'll level the Hangerback on unstep. Yep. Okay, not a great draw. And at this point, with Michael only having one card in hand, I think minusing Nissa makes a lot of sense. So, minus Nissa. Yep. And I could still leave the hanger back in a defensive position to help against Reality Smasher, which could kill my Nyssa, but I th so if I attack like this, you're assume assuredly chump walking, and then Engineer blocks here, and then you go to 10, and then you gain 3 life on end step. That doesn't actually accomplish a whole lot, other than killing a Hedron Crawler. I think getting being able to minus my Nyssa again next turn is fairly important, which I... Should be able to do, because if Michael had P and Kieran, he would have played it last turn as well. Uh, so unless he draws P and Kieran, I will be able to minus Nessa next turn. So I th And if he plays Reality Smasher, I can block it and have Nissa only take two. So that's still good. Still might want to, if his last card is a Roast, play around like Roast plus Reality Smasher. Because once these are four or fives, the game should end pretty quickly. So I can afford to be a little conservative. So I'll just attack with two of them, actually. All right, I'll block one with Thopter Engineer and take two. Yeah, you're 12. 12. Uh, you can go. Activate two. Go to 15. 15. It's possible I've played this game a little too conservatively, but 
Ooh. That's not bad. All right. Play Foundry of the Consoles. <laughs> Activate this. Attack your Nissa for three. Your turn. Uh, this is frustrating. <laughs> Make a plant. Mm -hmm. Now we just have to start bashing. Send with the team. All right, I will block a uh, hanger rack walker and then chump a plant and activate this to gain five life. So you go to 16 after everything's said and done? Go to 20 and then I take four. Yep, 16. <sighs> you can go. What does that do? I would certainly like to get this into play this turn. Just to use my mana and have something substantial offensively. Um, I could play this and leave up a tomb activation. How do I keep my Chandra alive if I play this turn? I really do want to kill Nyssa, so a Chandra plus will accomplish that. Um, but I also probably need to start getting aggressive to actually win the game, because I'm kind of abyss-locked by this Hangerback Walker. Chandra goes to 5, so I need to block at least 2 creatures to keep her alive next turn. Um, so I'm going to play Chandra plus her. All right. So I'm certainly going to send both of these elementals at Nyssa. And then the question is how I'm going to attack with the rest of my creatures. Ross is at 17. We also have the option of like sending an elemental at Nyssa and then two Thopters at Nyssa and then attacking Ross with the elemental. I'm not sure that really does anything different. If you send two Thopters at Nissa, you can just send both elementals to me. I'm empty handed. Oh right, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm really stupid. You leave three blockers see, back. So I could do for that. Chandra in case I draw a removal spell. And then Yeah, so the only thing that would punish me there is Dramoka's command, basically. Uh because I get to command here. Yeah. Um but I don't think I can play around the third command. I probably just need to try to close this game out. Um, but I'm not sure I want to. So I can block a plant, jump here. I'm not sure I actually want to jump away my Hadron Crawler yet, because the mana might be valuable. Um, but I do like the idea of sending both elementals at Ross, so I'm just going to do that. Okay. I'm going to make no blocks. All right, so you're going to go to 11. This is dead. Your turn. Okay, I would like to draw a spell here. I would like you to For continue bricking. First time in this game. Oh man. Sounded like a land. Ross doesn't seem that excited. So you block here, you would jump here something so I can get Chandra to one, which seems valuable. Yeah, uh, the potential for me to not be able to just clean up the rest of your plants is probably something you're interested in. Chandra one, and then uh, the thing is you would be able to, if you chumped with Hedron Crawler, the crackback is for 10. If you have a single artifact creature, I'm just dead. I guess I get to block a 3-1. Uh, right. So you would need a Reality Smasher to kill me. But if I just hold back, you can keep plussing Chandra, and I can only profitably eat one. Or just zero. Uh, yeah, you can also do that. Start pulling ahead that way. Uh, neither of these lines seems good to me. When did this game get away from me? Maybe I should have minus a turn earlier. Uh, if 
felt like I put you in a very bad spot, but you drew out of it both times. But you are not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got to get the Shunder off the board. All right, I'm gonna put Thopter in front of a plant and then chump the Hangerback Walker with a Thopter. Sure, uh, Shandra got a one. Um, that doesn't really do anything. So I need to decide. I'm definitely going to plus Chandra and attack Ross this turn just because that might force him to get defensive next turn, and then I can start um, zeroing Chandra. If the game starts to slow down a little bit, then I definitely want to keep my Thopters around. So I might be interested in attacking with them this turn, since I'm not going to be blocking anyways. So Chandra's going to go to two. I'm going to have to all of this in play, which can block a plant. I can just go ahead and play that, I guess. Well, I don't think it's going to affect your decision, but so I'll have that to block another plant, and then I need to chump the Hangerback Walker and chump a plant, so I need at least one Thopter back. Might be a little safer just to keep them both back. Um, I think if we can keep Chandra alive for an additional turn, then we're probably in good shape, so I think this turn I can choose to play more defensively than I did on the previous turn. So I'm going to plus and attack with two elementals. I'll block one with a plant. Okay. So you're going to get an eight. I think that plant is worth less than three life. I'm going to play a Vile Aggregate, a Runes of Orin Reef, and pass the turn. That was a good draw. Play an Absent Falconer. Oh, jeez. And now I can send these three at Chandra? Yep. Uh, yep, Chandra's down. You can go. I'll gain four life. Get a 20. That was also a good draw. Um, let's do some math. All right, Ross is at eight. Block aggregate, block a thing, take four. This doesn't have flying. Oh, good point. All right, so if we attack with these, then I guess Ross could chump away the aggregate, but that's not going to happen. So it would be Hangerback Walker on aggregate, take four in the air, go to four. Uh, Runes of War and Reef is an additional point, and this is an additional point, but that's not lethal. Um, so if I attack with all four Thopters, then Ross blocks one, and then I have the option of tossing it. should probably just attack with Thopter Engineer, because that presents lethal, forces me to make this block. Then you can so, kill the, the Absent Falconer after after combat and have a bunch of Thopters that I can't deal with. What would happen if you just blocked Hanger back on this? Oh, so oh, if I sent all yeah. three of these, then... Then I have to block here You block and here, here, you block dead. here, you take four... You, five, six, seven, that's not quite lethal. It's not lethal, but you just get to kill... You get to bring me to three. But there's no difference between attacking like this and attacking like this, I don't think. No, because then I get to put Hanger back here and you never get to kill my Falconer. The point is you get to kill my Falconer if you force this block. You sacrifice something to kill my Falconer after damage and then none of my creatures are flying anymore to block any of your Thopters. But then on the way back, it's 10, 12, 14, 16. So theoretically, a Nissa could kill me. No, because you chump with P and Kieran and take six. Oh, I can't chump with this unless I get rid of this. I'm All saying right. if I don't get this off the board. Yeah, but you do get this off the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm, I have no outs. I'm just trying to figure out if that's... I think that is probably better, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I can't. I literally can't win. Five, six. Yep, okay. All right, so we add a counter to a Thopter token. Uh, go to damage. I go to three. I... Sacrifice a Thopter to kill Abzan Falconer. Yeah, now I have to and somehow turn. draw an answer to a Thopter and answer to Pia and Kieran all at the same time. And even Jeroka's command, kill Pia, doesn't do anything. because yeah, you just have four in the air. Yep. Uh, actually, tens, yeah, Jeroka's command, kill Pia, 
No, I get to, actually that does kill you. So maybe this will, because I get to level this. Oh, you seven. could level up in a turn. So 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Yeah, yeah. that would be lethal. That does give me a two outer, I guess. Um, well, and you can also just draw Falcon. Oh, no, no, I guess Falconer is not lethal. Yeah, because it doesn't add two damage. Yeah, I still think this, this line looks okay. good. Well, let's. I'm at three, so I'll go to one. Ah, the Drogus Man was on top. <laughs> was it really? <laughs> yeah. That's sweet. Why did I look? Never look. Never look, kids. It's just good television. It's, there's no way it's going to be on top. Never this lucky. Okay. You're going to have to cut this time. Just Okay, for drama, sure. Yeah. Okay. Are you sure that was the best attack? I kind of believed you halfway through. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I thought I was completely dead because of it. I forgot about me leveling plus strong. Oh, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. It's possible there's a better one once I realize that, but... Yeah. Eh. Nope. Okay. 